Hey everyone, welcome back to Painted. I'm Maury Curtis Dunbar, your host for the day. Oh my goodness, I'm looking in the mirror, and, or looking in the camera, I can see my necklace is all twisted up. That's an interesting thing to see, since I don't generally pay much attention to myself in the, the mirror once I'm dressed for the day. All right, so now that I've adjusted my mirror and I've talked about that, um, adjusted my necklace, Jesus, I'm sorry, I'm tired, folks. Been a busy week, <laughs> I'm babbling. So today we're going to start with foiling birdhouses. Now, a couple months ago, um, I brought a bunch of birdhouses in. I foiled some, I showed the basic painting and priming. Hey, Cindy, nice to see you here. Um, and then I kind of set them aside as happens in a, a studio, you set them aside and nothing happens with them. So today we're gonna work on some projects. Hey, Maddie, nice to see you. All right, so this one is our castle birdhouse. Um, it doesn't have a bird ha a perch for the bird to sit on, but it has two openings, completely wonderful to use, both as decorative or outside as an actual birdhouse. Now this was raw wood. Hey, Cindy, nice to see you. This was raw wood when I received it, uh, but I've painted it uh, with faux effects set coat dark brown. It is, the paint is interior and exterior rated, which is why I did it, because we're gonna put some of these outside of my house and see how they hold up. Now, when we get these birdhouses, they're rough. Um, they're craft birdhouses, they're, they're rough textured, so you need to sand them and then prime them or uh, put a layer of paint on them, sand it again, and then put your next layer on if you want a smooth finish. Now, I've done that with both of these. This one's painted with set coat dark brown. This is painted with full effect set coat black and um, gravel gray. So we're gonna start by applying foil adhesive. I'm gonna swing this camera down so you can watch me do this. Not the most exciting thing I know watching me brush on foil adhesive, but it has to happen. So if, this is our Artsyville foil adhesive. And if you're wondering why it's in this jar versus the big can, my jar was at, my big can was at the bottom. I needed to pour out what I had left before it dried out, so I put it in a smaller jar. And then we're going to brush it on the surface. I'm not worrying too much about getting it into all the crevices, although that's what's gonna happen. Um, my bigger concern is making sure I get everything covered, you know, cover the whole thing. So I'm going in here, I'm using a stiffer brush because then that'll get into the crevices better and it'll hold up versus um, one of my softer brushes, which spreads it across the surface nicely, but doesn't work into crevices. So what you're seeing me doing here is I'm working in between the mortar lines of the castle. And then I'm just brushing on foil adhesive for the whole surface. And normally I start from the top and work my way down, but I actually need the top to hold on to uh, so I can rotate it. So this one, having painted it a couple times, I found that it actually works better if I paint it from the bottom section up. I have to work into these crevices. Um, just so you understand too, Artsyville foil adhesive is not exterior rated, meaning that um, it's not designed to hold up when exposed to exterior weather. However, we are testing it with exterior rated top coats, base coats, etc., to see exactly what the breakdown rate of the foil adhesive is. Don't ask me what it is right now. I'm not sure because we're still testing. It's, I got a table sitting out in my backyard um, that I'm testing that you all saw the table that I did that gorgeous um, blue-green tie-dye one. So we're testing the foil adhesive on that to see what the breakdown is and everything on it except the foil and the adhesive was exterior rated, which is basically what I'm doing with the birdhouses too. You know, you don't have to have these outside. They're very cute inside. I'll get some more adhesive on my brush because I'm not getting it into all these crevices. And this is what takes so long on stuff like this. You gotta work it in. I almost primed, did all this painting beforehand, uh, before I went live, but part of doing anything is seeing all the techniques used to get stuff done. All right, come on. 
Um, I could have just taken a whiz roller and rolled across the surface, but I wouldn't have been able to work it all into the crevices. There's one side done. So you can imagine this has taken me a long time today to work on these, but these are great projects. I like doing this kind of stuff. Um, there's a zenness to just putting on an even coat of a product on a surface. There's a pleasure just to see the product move well across the surface. Yeah, I am actually one of those people who kind of gets into that. I just, when something moves across the surface well, I get so into how that feels with the brush. Um, one of my stories of when I first started painting, I was a toddler. And um, my grandmother was watching me because my mother was homesick with, or my, my sister, who was a baby at the time, was sick. And so my mom asked my grandmother to watch me for the day. Well, she just had her living room walls painted. Beautiful, very pale blue. And I must have seen the painters doing some of the work because then I went into the bathroom in the kitchen and I found myself a pastry brush and a jar of Vaseline. And I painted the wall behind the chair that my grandfather used to sit in in the living room with Vaseline on a pastry brush. And everybody says, how do you remember that? I said, it's a tactile rem memory. I absolutely remember the feel of brushing the uh, Vaseline on the wall. And I know exactly which pastry brush I used. She had one that looked like a bunch of wo woven feathers. And it was such an, it, it, I loved the feeling of the way that moved around the surface. Of course, nothing quite spreads on a wall like Vaseline. <laughs> but yeah, I was, I was a popular kid for that move too. My grandmother, after having discovered I just painted her brand fresh walls, freshly painted walls that she paid somebody good money to do, you know, like they pay us. Um... <laughs> took me by the hand, walked me back to my mother, or walked me into my mother's house and looked at my mother and said, and you can keep that one. <laughs> and told her the story. Yeah. I've been painting stuff since I was very little. All right, this, this challenge up here is getting into these parts, but you know what, I'm not worrying. I got all the paint in there. Right now, all I'm more concerned with is getting foil adhesive across the surface. So I don't really care if I get it into the crevices. I want it across the entire surface though. And then I want it across the top. And I'm not even gonna try to get down in here. I will just make a huge mess out of that. If I decide it needs to be done later, I'll go in with a smaller, finer brush to clean that up. Okay, just go around here. And then I gotta clean any of the dribbles because I have dribble spots that you can see they're kind of pooling there a little bit. Oh, you're outside in a rocking chair. You're testing your rocking chair. Oh, that's fun. Thanks, Maddie, for letting us know. I think that's a cool for, I, we all know I put a rocking chair out in my front patio already. He saw me doing the fair isle pattern. Um, yeah, so, you know, being on this lockdown situation, I can't bring a lot of, I can't bring client work in. Um, I've had a few pieces from people I really know and trust, because then I know that they're being handling them safely and that I'll handle them safely, but I will not bring in commission pieces from people I don't know because they usually then want me to come and pick it up at their house or they want to come and do something else that just is against all our, our, our lockdown regulations around here. So I'm getting down in here very gently, very carefully. Mm -hmm. 
And if you see me making faces, it's because my glasses keep slipping down my nose and then I can't see as well. I'm going in here. Hi, Celia. Hi, Avi. Hi, Camilla. All you guys in here peeking at what I'm doing. Nice to see you all. All right. So we're just going to put adhesive on this one. Now, obviously, on this one, I am putting adhesive on almost the whole piece. We'll work on some of them in different sections because I'm going to want to foil them differently. And it's simpler to foil one color on a surface and then apply more adhesive and then put the next color in. It just, it works better. It's less, um, makes for a less complicated laying on of foils because I've tried it the other way, you know, before I thought out the process and I had random foils sticking in all the wrong places and it infuriated me. Because I was just, it was just not making the project come out right. All right. So I'm getting very top of the castle's walls here. And right now I'm only doing the inside. I want to be able to stick my fingers in here. I'll do the top of the, the parapet. But really we're going to be able to stick our hands and stuff. So I'm going to stick that to the side and then we're going to shift on to this one. And I think what I'll do is I'm going to foil the window, the, put the adhesive on the windows here and then on the roof and the doors. And then we're going to move on to another piece um, that actually has adhesive drying and ready to be foiled. But this is, you know, part of the process. You got to take your time. And I just like to paint the windows first because we're going to foil the windows first. Why am I painting the windows first and not the body? Um, because quite frankly, sometimes you have to go back and forth between cleaning up. So I like to start with the littlest details first if I can get them in and cleaned and ready to go. And then I go back and back and forth. And I may only do just the windows and the front of the house right now and save the other gray spots for another time. I want to see how all this is going to lay out. I have, I have ideas. I'm thinking, I'm thinking. I have lots of ideas, right, Camilla? But now I have to make them actually, you know, work. So I'm going to put that on there. And I will foil the bird perch. I don't even know if birds, this is big enough for a bird to actually perch on. I'm not sure, you know, if birds have ever actually lived in any of these craft houses that uh, I buy that, that we then foil. I've never gone to snoop. I don't have bird houses at my house. Um, that's why I'm creating some, maybe one will go into my house. Heck, I just had, I've just gotten finally a garden going for the first time in almost 20 years. <laughs> you live in an apartment for a while, you don't do birdhouses, you don't have a garden, and you don't have a lot of things. And what is everybody else making? We are having a great Sunday, Saturday here today. It's beautiful, it's sunny out. I know a lot of people may be inside, outside doing projects. Um, Behind my studio, I'm setting up uh, my little retreat space. Put a couple little Adirondack chairs out there. We're getting a planter. Make it just a, a little place we can go for rest and have lunch outside and stuff if we want to here at the studio. All right. And the stairs are gonna probably be the hardest because there's a lot of little angles and stuff in there that are gonna have to be worked through. So I may only do one of these stairs, sets of stairs right now. And mind you, when you do something like this, you don't just set it upright and paint it like this. You turn it this way, you turn it this way, you turn it this way. You need to see every angle. And that doesn't mean every 
spot is painted perfectly, it means you're familiar with the entire surface so that you can treat it completely by the time you're finished with it. Um, I usually paint, when I'm painting furniture, I usually paint the bottoms of chairs and tables just because I like that completed look on it. Now also, this wood is pretty porous and even with all this paint that's already on here, I kind of feel the adhesive wants to suck into it. So we may not have a, um, I'm not sure what's gonna happen with this foil release on this one. But I can feel the, the adhesive wants to suck into the surface. All right, I'm gonna paint, let's see, let's paint the center stairs because this is gonna be a little bit. So we're gonna do this. posts and the lintels of the doors. So you all may not know this, my degree is actually in environmental design, which back when I was in school was what we called interior design because it needed to be separated from interior decorating because at that time every decorator was calling themselves a designer and none of them could read a blueprint so ASID was pushing for differentiations even in the uh, course naming at university so I studied at Syracuse University I studied environmental design and actually, it was at college that I got into doing this. I took a class um, where we had to do um, a lot of uh, historically accurate uh, restoration and renovation plans. And I got into designing wallpaper for that period and for um, sandblasting, we, we created a whole theme of patterning. And so we had wall patterns, we had floor patterns, we had marquetry going etched glass, all kinds of really cool stuff. And that's really what got me into wanting to go back to painting. I paint, like I said, I painted all my life, but you know, my parents were concer reasonably concerned that um, that's great, Maury, but you know, you still have to do something where you can make a living. So. I spent five years in college studying design and realized I never wanted to spend my life sitting at a drafting table um, because I spent five years doing that. It's not that I disliked the drawing, I just hated the, the, <laughs> the tightly controlled regulations of drawing Luke prints. Uh, and meanwhile, every chance I got, I took a paint painting or a design class that was sort of related most of the time it was either pattern or textile design. And uh, I really liked all of that, but it still wasn't painting all the time. All right, so I have done some foil adhesive around the windows on the um, bird perch and through the front door and the lintel. So we're gonna set that aside to let that go. And I'm going to go step to the hot box and grab one that has foil in. Give me just one minute. So here is another birdhouse design that we carry here. This is the little church. And I've already applied foil adhesive um, to the walls. And then we'll foil the rest of, that needs to be foiled after we apply the, uh, the foil. All right, so most of the foils I'm working with today are V-mask, but I thought it would be kind of fun just to add a little sparkle. So since the other item uh, the other ones are going to be a little darker i thought we'd go really bright now this may not give a great release over the white i know that white is not the ideal background for this but i'm going to make it work why because i've already solved that problem once or twice in my head today so set that aside take a little foil it cut this off 
And this is, you're gonna see why your base color makes a difference. Normally under a silver, I would choose a gray. All right, I see people saying things. Uh, <laughs> hi Camille, yes, uh, bad attitude. Her little brother calls me bad attitude. It's a very cute story. I've already told you one about me painting walls today, so I'll, I'll hang on the bad attitude story for another day. All right, so I've put foil adhesive on here. I'm sliding it up under the eave. I am laying it down to the surface. And I already know there's going to be breaks in this. I've got wood grain under here. So there's going to be some challenges with this release. I'm okay with that. Why? Because I know what I want to do to adapt to those damages or those, those flaws. I shouldn't say damage. We're gonna have like a little disco bird church here. And already you can see that was a really good release. I mean, look how well that came off the foil. But if you look at it, you can still see the grain. That's that's where the the uh, wood is grabbing things in, in very interesting ways. And I also have a little spot up here that needs to get done up. Let me get my toothbrush. Go up under that eave. And we'll get the back. And I'm gonna just try to set this on here carefully so it lays as smooth as humanly possible. I actually did that one pretty well. So we're gonna go up here, and I think I want a softer brush. So I think that bigger, heavier scrub brush may have scrubbed it a little harder than I'm happy with. That can often, if you have a scrub brush, if your adhesive is a little on the soft side and you have a, a stiffer scrub brush, it can actually create dull spots if you scrub too hard. See, that came out much shinier. And I still have flaws here. I still need to come down here and scrub a little harder. And honestly, I wouldn't be surprised this if I needed this to be flawless, I might have to come back with a second layer of adhesive, not for any reason of the adhesive, but more because I've got a challenging surface. using the stiffer brush but I'm using it more gently than I normally do because that'll let it get into there a little better than I was doing before. There we go. Again, nice release. And I kind of like the way it picks up the wood grain. That's kind of fun. And let's get this, this side. taking advantage of all my scrubbing tools to do this to make sure I get as much good release as I can. And let's see. A little more down here. And I can get up in there a little bit again. 
again. Let's see if I can get this up under there a little. And then I'm gonna need a fresh piece for the face of the church. So this is actually going to be, now that it's coming out the way I want it to, I can tell you that this is going to be, okay, if you're wondering what I'm doing, I'm snipping a little hole in here so that the post for the bird to sit on goes through the foil. <laughs> I'm not fighting around it. down. So this, this little church that I'm creating is actually going to be sort of an Americana 4th of July, red, white, and blue. So the body's silver stars, the roof is going to be red, uh, blue stars, and then the church door, the bird post, and the little detail here around the steeple, they're going to be red stars. I just, I couldn't resist. My, my patriotism is going full force right now. We're coming into summertime, all the wonderful summer holidays. Um, we got some pleasant news about opening up. Looks like summer activities are going to start opening up here in June on schedule. Um, no concerts and stuff like that, but honestly, just the idea of being able to go outside to a park sounds wonderful to me. Ah, that's cute. I just got to go in here a little bit with this. Anybody else feel like they become a contortionist when they start doing something like this? I bend myself in some very interesting positions trying to get stuff done. And then I realized, you know, you really didn't have to bend that way more. You could have just moved it so you could see it. You know what's happening though? As I'm kind of sliding out of screen and I apologize for that because I'm so busy looking at what I'm doing and because I'm left-handed, I push things this way. And because Facebook won't let me work on a wider angle on my phone all of a sudden, um, I'm, I have to keep checking the camera to make sure you all can see me. Not something that was a problem before. Let's see, get this a little bit down in here. Sometimes I just take my fingernail. And then I just want to get a little more up into the steeple area. Well, actually, this is the steeple, so. All those years studying different architecture and I forgot what part of the church I was talking about. So here we have this and it's so cute with the stars and then we're going to take a little bit of foil adhesive while we're all sitting here. And we're going to put the adhesive on. And if you want to see the continuation of this, I'm going to finish this video up shortly so that the foil adhesive has time to set up. Um, but then we're going to be live uh, on Artistic Painting Studios page in uh, about half an hour, four o'clock. So if you wanna watch this in continuation, please join me on Artistic Painting Studios page as their guest retailer, and we will continue doing more with birdhouses today. 
lots of fun things. We're gonna be using a lot of V-mask foils today, I think. That was my plan anyway. So I'm gonna foil the adhesive this. And I will get to the roof and everything as well. I just don't like, I want, again, you need a good grab spot. So we're gonna do that. And I haven't decided exactly, I want the roof on to see how much blue I'm looking at there to determine just where I want the red. Do I want more blue down here? Do I want it red down there? Do I want the red in the door to be the red on the, you know, lots of ideas. So the first thing I'm just gonna do is start with the roof. And you'll notice I'm working with the grain. I can brush against it, but it doesn't help me and it doesn't make a nicer finish in the end. Working with the grain works better. Things spread smoother. You don't have weird textures appearing out of nowhere. Work with the grain. Okay, so there you go. It's all foil adhesive. So folks, you've seen the very beginnings of these birdhouses. Um, I did. I spared you watching me paint them raw wood. Actually, you probably go back like into last year, you might see the videos where I was staining some of them and doing that, but then they sat outside. I mean, sat on my shelves and I didn't do anything. So now we're moving forward. We're going birdhouse and foiling crazy today. So join me in about 20, 25 minutes over on Artistic Painting Studios page. We will continue these. Right now, I just got to let foil adhesive set up. All right, everybody. Have a great Saturday. See you soon. Bye.